Hello and welcome to the Key Stage 4 Options presentation. Um, again, it's a shame that it has to be done remotely, however we're not quite at the stage yet where we can have really large amounts of people coming into the school building, um, but I'm sure that you'll get all the information that you need from this presentation and obviously you've got the benefit that you can re-watch if there's anything you're unclear about. Okay. So this presentation will aim to do three things. First of all, it is uh, provided with an understanding of the curriculum that the students will study in both year 10 and year 11. So as we make that transition from a key stage three into a key stage four, I'm going to explain what is meant by core and um, optional curriculum, and also I'll be able to provide some information to help you and your child make some choices about what's the best way to move forward. So, should have said at the start, my name is Mr. Musset. I'll be overseeing the options process along with Mr. Martin, um, the other deputy head. Um, and if there's any questions at any point, if you'd like to direct those to either myself or Mr. Martin, uh, alternatively, if there's any other member of staff, is it something specific about their subject? So, the, the options process so far, what have we done so far? All students have attended a virtual careers fair that happened in our last enrichment day. Um, all students and families will have or should have access to Zello, which is a careers based software package that tracks the student all the way through their time at school. It's an excellent package. If you've not had a chance to have a look at it yet, I would suggest that you, you use your login um, and really explore all the great uh, um, resources which are on there. All students have had the opportunity to watch subject videos um, which explain the different courses and these are all available on our website as well. So again, I would encourage you after watching this video to go on and check out all those different subjects. In addition, the students, um, since we've returned and prior to the Christmas break, have been looking at the options process within their PSHE lessons. So two or three mornings a week, there's been lots of conversations, there's been lots of work thinking about what is this going to look like for each individual child. All students have had the opportunity to trial the options process using the Google form. So we've been doing that with all the students. Every one of them um, has or will have the opportunity over the next day or so to run a complete trial option just so they know how the process works. That gets completely cleared um, until they have the opportunity to complete the, the actual form. <clears throat> all students have or should have brought home an options booklet which explains about all the different courses and where they can get more information. Digital copy of that is available on our website as well um, under uh, key information, key stage four curriculum. And all students and parents will have the opportunity to discuss the course with staff. Please use our list of email addresses which are on our website. Again, if there are sp um, subject specific questions that you've got. Um, and at the same time, we have been encouraging the students to have those conversations. So what is the key stage four curriculum? What does it look like? So we've got two parts essentially. So the first part is the core curriculum, which is made up of approximately 30 lessons a fortnight. The reason I say it's approximately 30 lessons is because we have some different pathways for the students. Okay? And we then have our options process, which is made up of approximately 20 lessons a fortnight. Okay? So it depends on which pathway the students go through, then um, it will be about how much choice they have. So the core curriculum, that is the, the curriculum that all subjects, regardless of their options, will choose, uh, will, will need to study. So first of all, all students will study English language, which is one GCC. All students will study English literature, which is another GCC. All students will study maths, which is another GCC. All students will choose science. Now, there are two different pathways in science, and Mr. Wilby will be working with the students and parents a little bit later on in the year, um, to discuss about what these particular options are. Okay, but essentially there's one pathway that for the vast majority of our students, which is two GCCs, a combined science, and then there's a trilogy, so the individual sciences for our most able scientists who will go on and study those individual subjects. In addition to this, we have core PE, so all students will study core PE, whether or not they choose a PE option. All students will have, continue to have PSHE, and they'll also have an additional subject, which is where we will make sure we're meeting our statutory PSHE and RE requirements, and that will be in our timetable as well. But those bottom courses aren't examined. When you go through the booklet, apologies, this is slightly fuzzy, but when we go through the booklet, you'll find that there are some different courses. Things have maybe changed a little bit since some of our parents went to school. So previously, when perhaps a lot of our parents went to school, the way it had been assessed would have been an A star, to G grade, with then a U for ungraded. 
the uh, assessment um, scheme changed a few years ago. We now have a nine to one system. They do not meet uh, completely. So that, that was done on purpose. So it, it couldn't be completely married up. However, effectively what we're trying, trying to look at is when we look at the old C grade now, there would be a standard pass, which is a grade four, and a strong pass, which is grade five, okay? So um, in terms of next steps, in terms of students moving on to further education, and they talk about a pass grade, it's around here that we will be looking at, okay? And the nine grade is the, is the best grade, which is the equivalent of an A-star style. You're looking at approximately 2% of the, the uh, national um, student population will be hoping to achieve those grades. You'll find that we have lots of GCC equivalent courses. They, they are assessed slightly differently. So what we have here is we have level one courses and level two courses, okay? So it's the same qualification, but if a student gets a level two pass, it'll be a grade somewhere within here. And within the level two, you'll find there's an additional grading system. Uh, so pass, merit, and distinction. So students can still gain the equivalent of the new GCC grades, but it'll be down as a level two pass. And for those students as well, we've also got the level one pass, which is here as an equivalent of a grade three or a grade two. Those um, subjects are clearly identified within our um, options booklets. So what are some of the progress measures? So there's lots of different progress measures um, which are used within schools and that the students are tracked against as well. Now the first one is a number that you will hear quite a lot about. It's called Progress 8. This effectively takes the students' Key Stage 2 scores. So when they come in on entry, it will then say that this student Based upon all of the different factors, this student would typically nationally go on to achieve this grade. Okay, so it might say this student should go on and achieve a grade five in English or a grade six in history, typically based upon all of the statistics. Okay, so that is a figure where we, we, we benchmark the progress that students are making their progress against what we would expect them to make. The second one is an attainment eight. That is just a raw attainment grade, where it's the average grade of the entire cohort against eight subjects. Okay, so that's why all students need to sit eight subjects. You'll find that they need this for their next steps within their uh, qualifications anyway. And the final one is um, what's called the EBAC, the English Baccalaureate. And it's about the percentage of students who are achieving the, uh, the English Baccalaureate. Now, the English Baccalaureate is made up of the English language and literature, maths, core or additional sciences and then for the students to get the, uh, the English baccalaureate they must choose a language and then they must have a humanities. Okay. Now the government has an expectation that 90% of all students should be achieving the, uh, the, um, the baccalaureate. The reason for that is it, because it means that the students have studied a broad and balanced curriculum. It's particularly important for those students that want to go on to further education and particularly for those that want to go on to, to university. Okay, ninety percent as a target is a very high target. We have um, got a number of our students who we are very, very strongly suggesting will go on and do the English baccalaureate. You'll find that within their options um, sheet, um, but it's it, we're not at ninety percent. Okay, we understand that for some of our students, this isn't an appropriate set of options. This is an appropriate pathway. Okay, for those students that perhaps have what's called an open pathway, if they choose to go on and study the the, um, the EVAC, fantastic, that's great, but the option is there. We have a whole uh, range of different qualifications. So here's a summary of all the qualifications that we have on offer for the students. And as you can see, we have a mixture of GCSEs. We have a, uh, a Welsh board. We have uh, OCRs. We have BTECs. And again, all of this is within the um, options booklet. All of these, the Cambridge Nationals, the BTECs, the Welsh Boards, they are all GCC equivalent. So they have the same level of rigour, the same standards within the course. Um, the students aren't disadvantaged if they want to choose one of those courses. We've just selected the most appropriate courses that are available at the moment. And as a new school, that is one of the significant benefits that we do have. We've been able to really think very carefully about what options we want to be able to offer. And we also want to think very carefully about what are the best choices for our students. Just while I'm talking about the options, you will notice that on some of the videos, there are staff, for example, I appear on some of the videos, I will not be teaching all those subjects. 
obviously as a new growing school, we've got a number of staff that will still be coming into post or staff that have been employed that won't staff yet. So actually some of these courses will be led by staff who currently aren't in school. Okay, but we are, we are very, very confident that we'll have all the staff in place to be able to run these courses. So what are the three pathways? Students will have had a individual form sent to them, what will be sent out on Friday, and you'll have got three pathways. The first one is our EBAC pathway. So students who have sent that form, what we are asking you to do is you choose one of Spanish or French. You then choose one of geography or history, and then you have two additional choices. Okay. If you wish to choose both languages, that's fine. If you wish to choose both humanities, that's fine within your options choices. That's not a problem at all. We then have our open pathway students. Students who are following the open pathway, what we are asking you to do, you need to choose one of Spanish, French, geography or history, and then you've then got three further choices. Again, if you wish to choose languages within here or choose any of the other humanities, that's, that's great, absolutely fine. We then have a very, very small group of students, um, and Miss Rogers, our SENT code, and working closely with these students and also with the parents, they will follow what's called our support pathway, where there is a bespoke support program, as well as the, the ASDAM program, okay? And she'll give you more information about that. In addition, those students will get the opportunity to select two other choices. So, some really important do's. Do read through the specification really carefully for each of the courses and make sure it is appropriate for you. So some of the courses are perhaps more practically based than others. Think very carefully about what does that course actually entail. Okay. Do talk to teachers about the subject. There is plenty of time to do that. Okay. So make sure you've got the opportunity to do that. Do consider the subjects which you enjoy. You are going to be studying these for another two years. For each subject that you study, additional subject, you'll be looking at an additional five hours a fortnight of studying that subject. Do think about your next steps. So what is it that perhaps you want to do when you do leave school? Okay, and how can the courses complement you? Watch the videos very carefully on the school website. Do talk through your, your options as a family. Okay, think about those really good combinations and what's gonna give a broad and balanced uh, offer. And do complete the form accurately and on time. In addition, when the, the students complete the form, so this will be sent home uh, via email for the personalized form, you're asked to rank your choices. So it's say, my first choice is this, my second choice is this. In addition, there is a reserve choice. Okay, it's really important that a reserve choice is thought through carefully as well. Don't choose a subject because, uh, because friends are doing it. Okay, a number of subjects will have more than one group. So there's, it's highly likely that you might not be in the same classes with each other. Okay. Don't choose a subject because of a teacher. They don't think I really like that teacher. Teachers change with new teachers come in, etc., etc., and there'll be more than one teacher in many subjects teaching. Please do not forget to make your choices on time. Whilst we are not running a first come first served, so as long as you meet that deadline, that's absolutely fine. If you are after that deadline, you then cannot be guaranteed the priority of your choices, and. Please do not choose subjects which you are not fully committed to. Okay, so for example, subjects such as dance, music, and drama, there is a high expectation that all students will perform on a regular basis. So if you're not comfortable performing, then I would suggest that these subjects aren't suitable for you. Okay. So final thoughts: we will try and give as many students as possible their first choices. Okay. With 180 students all making numerous choices, it isn't always possible to get everybody their first choice. However, by prioritising, it gives us a greater chance of being able to do that. If a subject is oversubscribed, we will look at a range of factors to ensure that the students and the subject gets the best possible fit. Okay? Again, it's unlikely that we're going to get exactly the right number of students that we need to study each subject. Please do think carefully about your reserved subjects. Also, if there are insufficient numbers for a course to run, then that course may not be available. It's just not viable, unfortunately, if there's only a very, very small number of students to run that course. Okay? In that case, what we will do is we'll have those conversations with those students and ask them to re-choose on whether or not their reserve choice is their one they want to do. On very rare occasions, courses do change. So actually, the specific course will change. So whether the dance course changes, or the music course changes, or whatever it happens to be, but we will always notify you and we choose for a very similar course, okay? 
just while we talk about courses, you will notice on the options booklet it does say about particular courses which you can and can't choose in combination. So for example, we've got two sports courses. Students cannot choose both the GCC and the BTEC sport. Effectively, the qualification is, is worth the same. Okay, so for the student, it means that they won't get a qualification for one of those in effect. Okay, it doesn't work out particularly well. So please do read through that carefully. Think very carefully about your, cho your choices. It is unlikely that students will have the opportunity to change their options once they've started. Okay, logistically, it's really, really difficult. And two, the students have missed learning. Okay, we are starting year 10. There is an opportunity now to really think about those course choices, so take time to do that. If there are any specific questions about this process, please either speak to myself or Mr. Martin, as well as any member of staff who will be able to support you, uh, you through that process. Okay, So I hope you've got all the information you need. Again, please do check out our website. Please do read through the options booklet carefully. Thank you.